Chapter 3. How to Correctly Generate Aspirations The first one is renunciation. We should renounce not only the external environment, but also our samsaric mind. What we need to renounce is the samsaric mind that is attached to the notion of self. Renunciation doesn't mean jumping from within the three realms to outside of the three realms. Even the monkey king cannot jump out of the three realms. Even if he flies a hundred thousand miles with a somersault, he is still in the five-finger mountain, which refers to the five aggregates. Although he can fly a hundred thousand miles with a somersault, he is still within the five aggregates. No matter how fast he flies, he cannot leave the three realms. In fact, the purpose of renouncing the external environment is actually to renounce the attachment to the environment. This is because the environment can trigger our samsaric minds. Only by eliminating the attachment to self can we be free from samsaric minds, realize the nature of emptiness, and attain liberation. We often talk about renunciation, which is the determination to transcend the cycle of samsara. Let's understand renunciation from a different perspective. The samsaric mind has been controlling us all along. There are many types of samsaric minds, including the samsaric mind of the desire realm, the samsaric mind of the form realm, and the samsaric mind of the formless realm. We should make a firm determination to free ourselves from all samsaric minds and eradicate them. This determination is the genuine renunciation. Buddhacitta The meaning of Buddhacitta is explained in detail in other courses, so we will just briefly explain it here. Buddhacitta is the aspiration to completely eliminate all obstacles, such as the afflictive obstacles and cognitive obstacles of one's own mind and the minds of all sentient beings, attain great freedom and achieve supreme enlightenment. Chapter 4. The Greatness of Buddhacitta The Greatness of Buddhacitta Buddhacitta is great because it is boundless. The merits of generating Buddhacitta are inconceivable, which is essentially because it is boundless. If your aspiration is limited, then no matter how much work you do for the benefit of sentient beings, your achievements will be limited. We know that when any finite number is multiplied by infinity, the result is always infinity. Similarly, if we engage in any virtuous actions with an infinite aspiration, although the virtuous actions are limited, the results will be infinite. This analogy is great. Being boundless is the greatness of Buddhacitta. Buddhacitta is so great because it is boundless. Any other aspirations are limited, so they are not so great. Therefore, after generating Buddhacitta, the results of doing any actions will be infinite. Buddhacitta is the gateway to Mahayana. The wisdom of emptiness is the common cause for attaining Buddhahood, while Buddhacitta is the uncommon cause. The wisdom of emptiness is called the common cause because practitioners of the three vehicles all rely on it to attain enlightenment. It is the mother of the practice of the three vehicles. Buddhacitta is called the uncommon cause because among the three vehicles, only the practice of the Buddha vehicle requires Buddhacitta. In other words, Only after generating Buddhacitta can one become a genuine heir of the Buddha and a qualified Mahayana practitioner.
this statement is important. Only after generating Buddha Chitta can one become a genuine heir of the Buddha. Before generating Buddha Chitta, one is not a genuine heir of the Buddha. Instead, one is just a similar heir of the Buddha, but not the real one. One is just close to the real one. Buddha Chitta is the gateway to Mahayana. This also demonstrates the greatness of Buddha Chitta. Chapter 5 Types of Buddha Chitta Buddha Chitta in Aspiration Buddha Chitta in Aspiration is expressed in the four great vows. Sentient beings are countless. I vow to liberate them all. Afflictions are endless. I vow to eradicate them all. Dharma teachings are boundless. I vow to learn them all. Buddhahood is supreme. I vow to attain it. What vast compassion and aspirations. This is a prayer for generating bodhicitta and aspiration in Chinese Buddhism. Moreover, we have another prayer for generating bodhicitta and aspiration. Today I generate bodhicitta, not for the sake of seeking the blessings of the human and heavenly realms, the attainments of arhats or pratyab buddhas, or even the attainments of buddhasattvas. I solely rely on the supreme vehicle to generate bodhicitta, aspiring to attain the supreme and perfect enlightenment together with all sentient beings. This is also an expression of bodhicitta in aspiration. Bodhicitta in action Bodhicitta in action includes wisdom and skillful means, which are the essential parts of the Buddhisattva path. After generating bodhicitta, we also need to uphold the bodhisattva vows and engage in vast practices such as the six perfections and the four embracing actions. They are the best nourishment for bodhicitta. The six perfections include the perfection of giving, the perfection of discipline, the perfection of patience, the perfection of diligence the perfection of concentration, and the perfection of wisdom. The four embracing actions include giving, kind speech, beneficial actions, and cooperation. The four embracing actions are also important. The first one is giving, which is also the first of the six perfections. Therefore, bodhisattvas should first cultivate the perfection of giving. Bodhisattvas use the four embracing actions to attract beings and lead them into the Buddha's teachings and the bodhisattva path. The four embracing actions are also about bodhicitta in action. Here, we only briefly mention them without delving deeper. Chapter 6. The Causes and Conditions for Generating Bodhicitta There are several methods to generate Bodhicitta, and the first one is the seven steps of cause and effect meditation to generate Bodhicitta. The seven-step method begins with recognizing all beings as our past mothers, remembering their kindness and wishing to repay their kindness then proceeds to cultivating it loving kindness, compassion and great resolve, and finally enters into the practice of bodhicitta. The first three steps, recognizing all beings as our past mothers, remembering their kindness and wishing to repay their kindness, are the preparation for generating bodhicitta. As I often emphasized, It's crucial to recognize that all sentient beings have been our parents in past lives. This step is fundamental. 
When you have strongly recognized that all beings have been your past mothers, remember their kindness and wish to repay their kindness. It's easy to cultivate loving kindness. When loving kindness arises, compassion naturally arises. As your compassion becomes very strong through practice, a qualitative change will happen. It will become great resolve. When the great resolve becomes very strong, bodhicitta naturally arises. To achieve a qualitative change in each of these seven steps, a quantitative change is required. You have all learned this seven-step method. You should practice it every day at least once, and gradually bodhicitta will arise. This method is great, but it won't be effective if you only study it once or twice. It's essential to practice it every day. Exchanging the attitudes toward oneself and others. The prerequisite for practicing this method is wisdom. Understand that ego grasping is the entrance to all suffering, while altruism is the root of all virtues. The Buddhas and Bodhisattvas can attain boundless virtues because their actions and generosity are all driven by altruism. The altruism in this context refers to the selfless intention to benefit others. This is also an important method for cultivating bodhicitta. Before practicing the method of exchanging the attitudes toward oneself and others, it's essential to cultivate empathy. We should never be self-centered. When interacting with anyone, we should first empathize with them, understand their needs, thoughts and circumstances, and see how we can help them. We should develop the habit of empathy, which is an important foundation for cultivating bodhicitta. The first thought of a bodhisattva is always how to benefit others. Therefore, Exchanging the attitude toward oneself and others is a fundamental quality of a bodhisattva. Ten Causes and Conditions These ten causes and conditions also begin with gratitude. Be mindful of the Buddha's immense kindness. Be mindful of our parents' immense kindness. Be mindful of our teachers' immense kindness. Be mindful of our benefactors' immense kindness. Be mindful of all sentient beings' immense kindness. Be mindful of the suffering of samsara. Being mindful of the suffering of samsara is to meditate on the truth of suffering. We should not only recognize our own suffering, but also recognize that all sentient beings are suffering as well. Moreover, we should also meditate on the all-pervasive suffering and the suffering of change. In this way, it's easier to generate compassion. Therefore, being mindful of the suffering of samsara is an important factor in generating a great compassion. It's also an important condition for cultivating bodhicitta. Respect our spirituality and cherish our human life. All sentient beings possess Buddha nature. Don't look down upon yourself. Through diligent practice, one can eventually attain Buddhahood. Repent karmic obstacles. We will not go into detail here. Aspire for rebirth in the pure land. In the age of Dharma decline, we should generate bodhicitta and aspire to be reborn in the pure land. Be mindful of the importance of keeping the Dharma available for a long time. 
To keep the Dharma available in the world for a long time, we should also generate bodhicitta. These ten causes and conditions were imparted by Master Tsing An, an inspiration to give rise to bodhicitta. It's very touching. I hope you can read it often, at least a hundred times. When you read it, you are actually cultivating it. Seeds nurture actions, and actions nurture the seeds as well. By gradually nurturing it in this way, the seed of bodhicitta will arise. Some people, upon hearing an inspiration to give rise to bodhicitta for the first time, can resonate with it and enter that state. This indicates that they have cultivated strong roots of virtue and seeds of bodhicitta in their past lives. Hence, after hearing it only once, they can enter such a state. Of course, if you have a teacher guiding you in the practice, you will progress more quickly. If you have a good teacher leading you in reading it, bringing you into the state of bodhicitta, it will definitely be more effective than reading it alone. Therefore, group reading is excellent. If you have a good teacher guiding you in group reading, it will be much more effective than reading it alone. Alright, that's all for today's lecture. 